Channel. Just we'll just put a dog in the background, guys. Channel ten is rolling. Everyone's ready. Okay. Morning, everyone. Um, today we're celebrating 50 years of the Dog Operations Unit since it was formed as part of South Australia Police. As this unit plays a really important part in keeping our community safe and sometimes even helping people in life-saving situations. The tasks that um, the Dog Unit's operations and its members undertake range from locating missing people, locating suspects, and they are able to detect illicit substances including drugs, firearms, explosives and even on occasions currency. This plays a vital role in our investigation part of the, the job that we do here in South Australia, but also when um, the interaction that the dogs have with members of the public can also be very pleasant and more recently they spent some time at the Royal Adelaide Show which goes down really well not only with the dogs and the handlers but with the community and children in particular. Um, over the, at the present time there are 20 dog handlers, there are 13 German Shepherd dogs and 13 Labradors and as I say they, um, they police all across the state 24-7, a vital part of supporting our frontline officers. Um, but at times the reality is they do go into dangerous situations and some of our dogs have been hurt as, as part of their um, operational police duties. In 2013 one of our dogs was stabbed multiple times by an offender and that led to a significant public outcry to protect the dogs in terms of the legislation that covers them but also for us to provide vital equipment and namely the stab proof vest that you see the dogs wearing today. So they are an integral part of SAFE and we're very, very happy to celebrate their 50th birthday here with you today. Are we having multiple speakers? Yep. Ryan, yep. did you want to say something? Yep. Uh, Senior Sergeant Ryan Johnson, the operations unit manager. As the Deputy Commissioner mentioned, uh, we're celebrating 50 years of the dog unit. Uh, it's obviously a huge milestone uh, for us to celebrate. Um, over the years, we've had a great deal of import into policing within the community. Uh, as Deputy mentioned, uh, finding human odour, which is what the dogs were trained on originally. Uh, we had uh, two members go over to the UK originally in 1973 to undertake a training course. And they came back with two dogs, Kafir and Rebel, uh, which formed the two first police dogs within South Australia. Uh, a short time after that another four dogs came over from the UK and formed a six dog contingent which uh, formed our operational um, numbers uh, from April 1974. So from that point uh, they've obviously provided a very important uh, service to the community in finding missing people, suspects and also uh, in 1994 <clears throat> the introduction of detection dogs with illicit, sub illicit substances. 1998 also saw the introduction of uh, firearms and explosives detection and it's come so far in the last five to ten years that we're also looking into things like technology detection as well. So um, looking into the next 50 years uh, we're looking at an exciting prospect uh, developing new capabilities and continuing to serve the South Australian public to a high level. And Ryan, just how important is the relationship between the operator and the dog? Yes, it's a very important uh, part of the dog operations unit. Obviously the bond between handler and dog uh, is uh, a very unique one. Um, working with animals, um, you, you have to develop that bond to enable to uh, basically um, form a working relationship, um, as you do, uh, and provide the best service that you can, whether that be in detection, or general purpose finding, finding human odour. Would you mind telling us more about the uh, new technology detection that you guys are looking into? Uh, what sort of technology would you be looking to detect? Yeah, so um, recently the AFP uh, held a technology detection um, capability course and the things that uh, these dogs are looking at being trained to detect are things like hard drives, uh, USBs, uh, mobile devices, SIM cards, all those sort of things, anything that technology can be stored on. Um, and that's a capability that we're currently undertaking research into. Who is your longest serving dog? Longest ser so all dogs roughly serve about eight years, um, give or take a year. So they look at retiring uh, so that they've got um, some form of life to be led after their operational uh, life. Even though some of them don't like it, um, they tend to want to keep working 
uh, that's uh, yeah, so generally about eight years. How does that transition actually go, transitioning dog into retirement? Yeah, so it's it's quite a um, unique process. Uh, usually the handler, uh, if they're staying on within the unit, will take on a new dog, um, and usually the retired dog um, retires with the handler. So you've got the retired dog at home, and the new dog has been trained up and is now operationally deployed. Uh, so you get situations where the retired dog gets a little bit upset that it's not going to work anymore. So, yeah. Do you have any statistics around how many dogs have served in the last 50 years? Yes, we do. So we've had 278 dogs uh, served throughout the 50-year um, lifespan of the dog unit so far. Uh, we've also had around 66 handlers uh, to this day. So, yeah. And what does the, the future look like for the dog operations? Are you finding they're being used more than, more than ever? Yes, so I think deployments are definitely increasing. Obviously, we're seeing a increase in population through South Australia, um, and that's uh, uh, reported to increase into the future. So an increased population uh, and an increased metro footprint means that we're deploying more and more. Um, we do service uh, statewide as well. So those trips out to the uh, country LSOs are becoming more frequent each year. So we, we use general purpose dogs out in the country as well as detection dogs. How long do dogs actually have to be trained before they are fully put into the force? Yeah, so it's pretty similar between general purpose and detection dogs. So we're looking at roughly about 12 weeks. So um, if you have a new dog and a new handler, uh, that can push out to about 14 weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, in, in general, 12 weeks and they're fully operational, ready to go. Have there been any notable challenges over the course of the unit uh, over its 50 years in regards to the dogs and keeping things organised and running smoothly? Uh, animal acquisition has always been a challenge. Um, so to maintain uh, appropriate dogs and get access to appropriate dogs uh, has uh, always been a challenge, which uh, is a challenge every year. Uh, so we maintain relationships with uh, local breeders and some, sometime interstate breeders, uh, particularly for the German Shepherds and also our detection dogs are sourced from Australian Border Force, so, uh, their facility over in Victoria. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, excuse me, I've just got one question for the Deputy mm -hmm. Commissioner, please. Sorry, uh, apparently there was a fatality overnight. My uh, boss is back at work just wanted to get a comment about the road toll numbers and all that if you don't mind please. Sure. So sadly last night we lost another life on South Australian roads. Um, the road toll to date has just gone up to 83 today due to a, the passing of someone who was involved in a particular accident um, some weeks ago. What I'd say to the public is um, all these uh, lives lost are avoidable. We ask people to take particular care on the road, think about the code of five, get to your destination alive. We're particularly concerned with the forthcoming long weekend because we know that that's his own a lot more travel, people moving around on our roads, particularly in regional areas uh, where people may be unfamiliar with those roads. So we really implore people to take care, don't speed, don't drink and drive, put your seatbelt on and really be aware of other vulnerable road users who, are, who have vulnerabilities because they're on a bike or on a push bike. So please take care because no one wants to have that knock on the door from a police officer telling you that your loved one is not coming home ever again. Thank you. Oh, thanks guys. Oh, thank Sorry, you. there's just one more.